I think we can get started. Um, hello, everyone. Um, welcome to <clears throat> today's EMU Zoom seminar. So um, it's really my pleasure to welcome uh, actually the EMU Zoom organizer, uh, initiator, so uh, and the co-founder, uh, Xiao Lei Su from Yale University to actually give us uh, his latest uh, update of his research program. So um, I think I, I'm just gonna give a brief uh, introduction of Xiaolei. So Xiaolei's lab is, uh, is uh, try to understand signaling pathway mediated immune response and to leverage that knowledge to the engineering of immune cell for cancer therapy. I think Xiaolei did a lot of uh, tremendous work on uh, T cell signaling, transmembrane uh, signaling con conduction and CAR T cell uh, therapy uh, exploration. So uh, Shelly actually received uh, his uh, training in cell biology as an in the undergraduate in Beijing University. And then uh, after he completed his undergraduate study, he actually pursued his PhD in cell biology at Harvard. So um, he actually discovered a unexpected dual module uh, to regulate of uh, microtubule dynamics by uh, uh, Cas8 mo models. And then he also identified a no new uh, microtubule sliding activity of uh, Cancin8 that facilitate this bundle assembly and phase four chromosome uh, segregation. So after he completed his uh, PhD work, uh, he continued to pursue his postdoc training in Ron Vale's lab in uh, UCSF, uh, where he developed a biochemical uh, system to reconstitute the T cell uh, receptor pathway in vitro with 12 purified compounds on synthetic lipid biolayers, which have never been achieved before. So, under a joint effort from HHMI uh, Summer Institute team, uh, he demonstrated a phase separation promotes TCR signal transduction. Now, uh, from um, 2018, he started his um, independent research program in Yale uh, School of Medicine. Uh, Charlie's group has been focusing on uh, several aspects on cell uh, um, signal transduction which includes to understand how phase separation regulate immune signaling, uh, molecular mechanism under, in underlying CAR-T cell activi activation. Uh, his lab has um, established the technique expertise in biochemical reconstitution, high resolution uh, fluorescence microscope and cell engineering. Uh, these discoveries uh, enable Shali's lab to comprehensively investigate and then manipulate the signaling pathway in both regular and the CAR T cells. So uh, Shali actually also uh, determined a signaling pathway that mediated CAR activation, which showed unexpected difference as compared to naive TCR, and also show uh, enzyme independent scaffold uh, function of um, uh, Fell of his uh, PLC, PLC gamma one in promoting the phase separation of T cell signaling compounds. Um, they recently actually implementing cell engineering tools to manipulate protein size and phase separation to control uh, T cell signaling output. We uh, and then uh, to expect these efforts to result in new strategies uh, for improving T cell based cancer therapy. So I think that the Charlie's uh, both uh, PhD and postdoc, uh, including his recent work, really impressive and then um, open a lot of new windows uh, to for the T cell, CAR T cell in particular therapy, and then T cell signaling um, uh, pathway. So with all these achievements, uh, there's uh, numerous words uh, having a word to Charlie's and his, his lab, including uh, Phoebus Junior Investigator Travel Award. Gilead uh, Science Research Scholar in Hematology and Ecology, uh, Charles Hood uh, Foundation Child, um, Child Health Research Awards, uh, Rally Foundation Grant, um, American Cancer Society Research for uh, Scholar Grant. So I think it's really actually my pleasure to, uh, to learn Shali's latest work today. And then uh, without further ado, please go ahead, Shali. Okay, great. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Tran, for uh, this really uh, 
comprehensive introduction. Uh, uh, it's my great pleasure to uh, meet uh, many uh, old and also new friends uh, in Immune Zoom. Uh, especially, I want to thank uh, all of your participants uh, in uh, the Immune Zoom, uh, which uh, I spend uh, lots of time uh, and, uh, to discuss uh, with uh, the speakers and also the audience in the past seminars, uh, which I, I learned a lot. Um, today, uh, I'm going to share with you about uh, our recent efforts uh, on using CAR as a tool to understand the transmembrane signaling and the engineering uh, immune cells. So CAR uh, stands for chimeric antigen receptor. It is a synthetic receptor that we can put into a T cell. Um, once engaged with the antigen on the tumor cell surface, CAR can trigger the activation of T cells, uh, which result in the release of cytokines or cytotoxic factors uh, that specifically kill the target cells. And so far, there are six FDA approved CAR Ts and all of them are targeting blood cancers. And there are over 600 CAR T clinical trials and targeting a variety of different cancers. So um, although T cell is a traditional cell carrier for CAR, uh, recent works show that CAR can also be used to reprogram other immune cells, including the natural killer cells and the macrophage. And these new cell types might overcome some of the challenges CAR-T is facing when targeting solid tumors. And on the other dimension, CAR can be used to target infectious disease and cardiac fibrosis. And the combination of new cell carriers and the new disease types generated a broad spaces for future research and development. So I think this is uh, uh, why I'm mostly excited about the CAR research. And one of the important reasons that CAR can be used uh, as a such versatile tool to reprogram multiple immune cells for a variety of different functions is that CAR is a modular receptor and in which its extracellular and the intracellular domain can be the novel synthesized or borrowed from other receptors. And the extracellular domain of CAR is usually taken from a variable region of a single chain antibody or called SCFV that recognize a specific antigen on the cancer cell surface. Actually, it is not only restricted to an antibody antigen interaction, but also it can be uh, a lot of other binding pairs including a, a natural receptor ligand interaction or an inducible binding pair of FKBP, FRB, or even complementary DNA strands. And the intracellular part of CAR is usually composed of tendon signaling domains from the T cell receptor and the co-receptors. The most commonly used are CE3 zeta from TCR and the CD28 and 4MBB but a variety of other signaling domains have also been reported. And here I just listed a few. So it sounds like CAR is a Lego receptor that you can take parts from other receptors and stitch them together and it worked. And this sounds like a magic to me because it is very different from what we have been taught in textbook about how transmembrane receptor is activated and take EGFR as an example, um, the EGF binding to the extracellular domain of EGFR caused a conformational change of the intracellular part uh, that triggered the receptor activation. However, um, this mechanism does not apply to CAR because there's no relationship at all uh, between the extracellular and the intracellular part. So the key question here is how does the signal come across the membrane. Um, two talented postdocs in my lab, Chen Xiao and Xin Yan Zhang, uh, decide to address this question. 
and the clue came from the domain structure of car. Among all the signaling domains, CD3 Zeta, uh, which is a subunit uh, of TCR complex, is the most critical domain for car activation. CD3 Zeta is phosphorylated by a kinase LCK and dephosphorylated by a phosphatase CD45. Some of you might know that the kinetic segregation model, uh, which is uh, proposed by Vandermann Wee and Davis. And in this model, CD45 is uh, excluded from the TCR synapse, uh, which caused the CD3 zeta phosphorylation. Interestingly, uh, in the case of CAR, uh, John James and Ronville also reported that uh, the CAR is also spatially excluded uh, from the a CD45 is also spatially excluded from the CAR synapse. However, uh, whether this causes CAR activation remains unclear. And inspired by all these previous work, uh, we proposed a size exclusion model to explain the CAR activation. To elaborate, in resting T cells, the CAR, LCK, and the CD45 are evenly distributed on the plasma membrane. When antigen is engaged with CAR, a narrowed intermembrane space or a synapse is created, which excludes a bulky uh, CD45 out of the CAR zone. As a consequence, CAR phosphorylation by the kinase is favored, which triggers downstream signaling that leads to the T cell activation. To rigorously test this size exclusion model, we decided to manipulate the lens of the extracellular domain of CAR by inserting a spacer. And this long CAR is expected to create a wider synapse and a reduced exclusion of CD45 from the CAR zone and the consequently lower CAR T activation. And we made several long cars or L cars by inserting a spacer composed of one to two immunoglobulin domains from a cell surface antigen CEA into the extracellular part of a CD19 car. The longest car has a spacer of six, 16 nanometer and the combined size of car and the antigen reached the size of CD45. So all these cars were initially introduced into jerk T cells and their surface expression level uh, were similar. In order to make sure that the spacer does not abolish cars binding to antigen, we tested the CAR T B cell conjugation efficiency, which is mediated by the CAR antigen interaction. Indeed, uh, the long cars induce a similar cell cell conjugation as compared to the control car. But in contrast, long cars induced less C45 exclusion from the car zone as quantified in the left plot and illustrated in the right figures. The gap of CD45 as pointed by the yellow arrow in the control car synapse disappeared in the L car synapse indicating a CD45 are in the car are mixed uh, in the long car. And consistent with the phosphatase activity of CD45, CD3 zeta phosphorylation uh, is diminished in the long cars, uh, which is not spatially segregated from CD45. And the same results were obtained on work phosphorylation, which is downstream of CD3 zeta phosphorylation. And this is for the jerker T cells, uh, we also tested these long cars in human primary T cells. The uh, long cars uh, actually induced less cell proliferation, cytokine interferon gamma secretion, and also cytotoxicity against the Raj B cells. So uh, here, cytotoxicity uh, is quantified by this cytotoxicity index. An index of one means um, there's no killing, whereas zero means a complete killing. So the lower the index, the higher the cytotoxicity. Um, together, uh, these data suggest that uh, the CAR T activation depends on its extra cellular domain lens. And it takes two to tangle. 
The size exclusion model also predicts antigen size affects CAR activation. A small size antigen or a membrane proximal epitope is expected to induce higher CAR G activation than a membrane distal epitope. To test if this is true, we selected a large sized antigen CD22 as a target. The single chain antibody RFB4 targets a membrane distal epitope on the full length CD22. And to change the antigen, uh, to change the epitope position without affecting the binding, uh, we also made a short CD22 on which the RFB4 epitopes now become membrane proximal. Again, uh, we first verify the full length and the short C22 can bind the car equally well, as indicated by a uh, similar cell cell conjugation efficiency. However, uh, short C22 induced higher CD45 exclusion uh, than the full length CD22. And consequently, short C22 induce higher CAR-T activation as shown by cytotoxicity, TNF offer, and the interferon gamma production. So uh, we also uh, performed a similar experiment on another CAR targeting CEA and get uh, similar results. Um, taken these together, uh, these data suggest that membrane proximal epitopes trigger higher CAR-T activation than membrane distal epitopes. And this provides a guideline for selecting epitopes or antigens uh, for developing new cars. And, but how? but uh, I think the availability of membrane proximal epitopes uh, depends on the protein structure. And in addition, uh, they can be buried uh, in the glycocalyx uh, in the, on the cancer cell surface and difficult uh, to access. So therefore a solution to improve CAR-T's targeting membrane distal epitopes will still be valuable. And the question is uh, how to do that? How to improve the CAR-T's targeting membrane distal epitopes? Uh, so let's still come back to this size exclusion model. In addition to CAR and the antigen, there is a third player, which is CD45. Our model predicts that increasing the size of CD45 would increase CD45 exclusion and the CAR-T activation, even you have a membrane distal epitope. So as a proof of principal experiment, we decide to add a CD45 antibody to increase its size. And here we use a CAR targeting a membrane distal epitope on CD22. We found that the CD20, CD45 antibody did not affect the T cell, B cell conjugation, but it increased CD45 exclusion from the CAR zone. And as a result, CD45 antibody increased CAR T activation as determined by the cytotoxicity and production of interferon gamma and TNF alpha. So in addition to the antibody treatment, we also took a genetic approach to increase the size of CD45. CD45 has multiple isoforms. Matured CAR T mostly express the short isoform called CD45RO, whereas the longest isoform CD45RABC is expressed in early stage of T cell development. And work from Carboni and Vail showed that the RABC can be better excluded from an in vitro reconstituted TCR synapse than the RO isoform. So this encouraged us to take a CD45 now JERCA T cell line and reconstitute it with either the short RO or the long are ABC isoform into these cells. So consistent with our model, we find that CAR T's expressing RABC can be better activated than those expressing RO as indicated by the CD69 expression and IL2 production. 
To summarize, we have systematically manipulated the size of all three players uh, in CAR T activation, CAR, antigen, and CD45, to demonstrate a size exclusion model explaining antigen dependent CAR T activation. The take home message is the size difference between CAR and the antigen pair and CD45 matters for CAR T activation. Actually, before our work, uh, tons of research had been done to determine how CAR and antigen size affect CAR-T activation. However, um, controversial results have been generated. Uh, I would encourage you to read these papers uh, if you are interested in the topic. I think uh, some of the conflicting data can be explained by factors other than the CAR lens. Um, and uh, uh, I would really uh, suggest to perform these quality control experiments, uh, for example, the cell cell conjugation assay, to make sure that engineering CAR protein does not uh, affect its expression or the antigen binding as compared to the uh, unengineered one. Uh, I think our contribution to the field here is to provide a molecular mechanism, uh, CD45 exclusion, uh, that uh, connect the size uh, of CAR, antigen, and the CD45. One of the questions I've been asked a lot by my colleagues is, uh, does this size exclusion mechanism explain the FDA-approved CARs? So here is a list of the six FDA-approved CARs. Um, so four of them are targeting CD19 and the two of them targeting BCMA. Uh, interestingly, uh, all of these uh, aptopes are membrane proximal aptopes. So it has a very short uh, distance to the uh, cancer cell surface. And the size of CAR antigen pair uh, is around 11 to 15 nanometer, uh, which is well below the size of the CD45RO, uh, which is uh, 22 to 28 nanometer. So uh, this uh, shows that uh, all these uh, successful cars uh, can fit the size exclusion model. I think it will be interesting to look at other cars, uh, these hundreds of cars in clinical trials and to see uh, uh, if the model fits. So, uh, Although uh, our work uh, has been focusing on this, uh, the size relationship uh, of the CAR and the antigen and CD45, uh, we do not uh, exclude other mechanisms uh, that can also mediate CAR T activation. Uh, some of the very interesting ones uh, include uh, uh, whether there is a force dependent activation of CAR. Uh, I think uh, there are many exciting work uh, in the TCR field showing the, uh, the TCR uh, is a, a, a catch bond, for example, by uh, 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 Chen Zhu's lab. And so uh, I think it's, it will be very interesting to look at uh, uh, how the car can respond to force. And also um, uh, whether the antigen induced clustering can uh, induce CAR-T activation. I think that's uh, another uh, very exciting uh, field to explore. Uh, so summary for here, um, so uh, I showed you that CAR activation depends on its extracellular domain lens and the membrane proximal antigens activate CAR better. And CD45 can be a target uh, for engineering CAR-T and to enable CAR-T uh, to target membrane distal aptopes. And also I think, uh, uh, the uh, remaining interesting question is whether uh, this size exclusion model uh, can be applied to explain other uh, CAR cells, for example, CAR macrophage of CAR NK, um, because CD45 is universally expressed on, uh, on almost all homopoietic uh, cell surface. So um, I think there is a, a great possibility that uh, these 
uh, car immune cells uh, can also adopt a similar mechanism uh, as we de demonstrated for the CAR T. So now I want to switch uh, gear to talk about the signal transduction network after a receptor uh, activation. So this is a cartoon summarizing the T-cell receptor signaling pathway. Uh, the traditional approach to understand a signaling pathway uh, is by depleting one of the component and see uh, if the pathway uh, is blocked or impaired. Uh, I think CAR provides another approach, uh, which is by providing an input signal that is related, but not identical uh, to the native receptor and see how the pathway uh, is changed or modified. And CAR can be used as a tool to understand the robustness and the flexibility uh, of a signaling network. So uh, from the signaling output side, uh, we already know a few interesting differences between the TCR and the CAR. For example, um, CAR-T can kill the target cell much faster than regular T cells. And however, the killing sensitivity uh, is much lower uh, in the CAR-T. So we know that uh, TCR is a very sensitive machinery and as few as a single digit number of peptide MHC or sometimes a single peptide MHC is able to activate an entire T cell. But in the case of CAR, uh, you will need at least 100 or sometimes 1000 antigen molecules to activate a CAR T cells. So there is a dramatic difference uh, in the sensitivity between these two receptors. And the other thing uh, I think interesting to mention is uh, both CD4 and the CD8 uh, CAR T can kill the target cell robustly. So this is very different from what we were taught in the textbook about T cell subtype. Uh, so CD4 is helper cells, but CD8 is uh, cytotoxic cells. And the underlying molecular mechanism explaining these differences, I think is still very unclear. So uh, below I'm going to uh, tell you a, a small story uh, that is uh, uh, done by, uh, led by two uh, uh, very talented people. So one, uh, Ray Dong, uh, uh, who is postdoc in Ron Wales lab at UCSF, and Kendra Libby is a student in my lab. Uh, so they identified a rewild signaling pathway in CAR-T, uh, which is different uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the TCR pathway. So uh, in order to monitor the CAR signaling dynamics at high spatial and temporal resolution, we used a supported lipid bilayer system uh, to activate CAR-T. So this system was originally developed by Mike Dustin. And so we adopted uh, to uh, uh, activate the CAR T cells. And so in this system, uh, the antigen presenting cells was replaced uh, by a synthetic membrane uh, coated on carbon gloss. And the, the advantage of this system is we can now accurately control the quantity of antigen molecules and also uh, control the species of lipids. And the other advantage is because now the, uh, the membrane is flat, so we can do a uh, turf microscopy, uh, which uh, give us a, a much cleaner signal. So by using this system, uh, we first look at uh, how uh, the, the car behave once a CAR T cells is dropped uh, CD19 coated uh, membrane. So uh, very quickly uh, after the uh, CAR T cells attached the membrane, uh, we observed uh, these uh, uh, small punctor uh, called microclass structure form. And by immune staining, we confirmed that uh, these microclusters are positive for phosphotyrosine, 
uh, which is a uh, universal activation signal for T cells. And then uh, we uh, wait for a little bit longer and to see uh, how these microclusters uh, behave. So uh, in about a quarter of the CAR T cells, we observe that uh, these microclusters form and then uh, they move central pedally uh, to the uh, cell center and form uh, these so-called uh, C-SMAC uh, disc-like structures uh, in the center of T cells. So this is actually uh, typically has been described uh, in, the, in the TCR synapse. Uh, but also uh, uh, in another quarter of cells, we observe that uh, these microclusters are formed and, uh, and then the C-SMAC is uh, initially assembled, but then disassembled quickly. Uh, so we uh, categorize, categorize these as unstable C-SMAC. And we also observe a, a small portion of cells uh, have these so-called kinase. So they form the, the synapse, but the synapse is not static, uh, it's keep moving. And uh, uh, in the rest part of the, the cells, uh, we saw uh, actually uh, these clusters uh, never uh, aggregate uh, in the center of the cells. So I, I think uh, this really uh, reveals the diversity of the, the pattern of the kind synapse. Uh, actually, uh, this non-typical uh, localization of signaling molecules, uh, including LCK and LFA1 in the CAR synapse has also been reported by the uh, Jenkins lab. Uh, so I think these raised some very interesting question. Uh, for example, uh, uh, whether the formation of these synapse uh, is related to the cytotoxicity or to the release of these performing and granzyme B to the target cells. Uh, because you can imagine like the unstable synapse might uh, favor a uh, 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 short uh, killing uh, or, or favor a uh, 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 high percentage of serial killing. So within a specific time, the CAR-T might be able to kill more target cells uh, it, if it form unstable synapse. But I think these are all, uh, I think, right now a uh, 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 suspicion and need like uh, experiments to, to test. Uh, but uh, in all these uh, different categories, uh, we find the CAR-T can form these microclusters. So we decided to look at uh, uh, what is required uh, for the microcluster formation. So again, uh, by looking at what we already know about the TCR pathway, so uh, the activation of the T cell receptor recruit the kinase ZAP70 to the membrane, uh, which phosphorylate a uh, key adapter protein called a LAT. Um, so based on the work from Larry Samuels and other uh, people in the field, uh, so LAT has been demonstrated to be an important scaffold for, uh, protein uh, for forming the T cell microclusters. And the LAT, uh, once it's phosphorylated by ZAP70, can uh, recruit downstream adapter protein called the gats grab 2 plc gamma uh, which further uh, trigger uh, the uh, downstream signaling output, uh, including the formation of the synapse and cytokine production. So uh, the bottom line here is LAT is absolutely required uh, for the TCR induced signal and microcluster formation. So we verified this uh, conclusion by uh, testing this in our CAR T cells. So uh, here we're looking at a much bigger field of view, which uh, include a few CAR T cells landing on supported lipid bilayer coated with CD19. And uh, uh, sorry, coated with OKD3, uh, which is an activating antibody uh, targeting TCR. So in wild type cells, you see these uh, nice uh, synapse formed, but in lat knockout cells, uh, these synapses are abolished. Uh, what's really interesting is uh, when we perform the same experiment uh, by using this uh, CD19 as a ligand to activate the CAR T, we find uh, in both the wild type and the lat knockout cells, 
uh, the, uh, the synapse can be robustly formed. And if we uh, take a look at the uh, synapse dynamics, we can see the microcluster form and they can uh, move uh, to the center of the cells. Uh, so these are actually driven by the retrograde flow of actin, which indicating the actin polymerization is also robustly activated in these lat uh, knockout CAR T cells. So uh, we further look at uh, uh, GATS, which is an uh, adapter that was known to bind the LAT. And uh, we find the GATS uh, can be recruited to the CAR uh, even in the absence of LAT. And uh, uh, relatedly, uh, we look at the phosphorylation of SLIP76, which is a, a binding partner for GATS. So phosphor SLIP76 can uh, activate NCK and the acting regulators to promote the acting uh, polymerization. So uh, the uh, level of phospho-slip 76 is also pretty comparable between the wild type and the lat knockout cells. And uh, what about the acting? Uh, yes, so uh, if you look at uh, the acting pattern uh, in the wild type cells, uh, when activated by OKD3, it forms these nice uh, uh, ring-like structures, um, but these are like largely abolished in the lat deficient uh, when activate with OKD3. Uh, but when activate uh, by CD19, uh, um, uh, the, the acting uh, ring-like structures uh, are always formed uh, whenever it's in wild type or lat deficient cells. And we also look at the cytokine production IO2 and uh, uh, in the lat deficient cells, uh, sorry, I don't have the label here. Uh, the orange is lat deficient cells, uh, which is uh, still uh, pretty robust, although a little bit uh, lower than the wild type cells. So taking these together, um, so uh, I'd like to uh, propose a, a rewild uh, pathway uh, uh, explaining the CAR T activation. So in the case of TCR, it going through uh, ZAP70, LAT, and then recruit uh, a few downstream adapter proteins to activate the synapse formation and cytokine production. And, uh, uh, but in the case of CAR, it seems uh, these downstream adapter proteins can be directly uh, recruited to CAR and bypass the requirement of LAT. Uh, so actually uh, another study uh, done by Stan uh, Riddell's lab uh, showed that uh, LAT uh, is much less phosphorylated by CAR as compared to TCR. So uh, that also uh, supports uh, our model that uh, there is a bypass pathway in the CAR-T activation. So why is this important? Uh, because uh, our previous work showed that uh, this LAT uh, adapted protein uh, can promote uh, phase separation, uh, which serve as a, a way to actually uh, amplify the, the TCR signal transduction. So by skipping this uh, LAT amplification step, uh, we suspect that uh, the uh, car signal transduction uh, or signal amplification is uh, insufficient. And that uh, can probably explain why the uh, car has a much lower antigen sensitivity as compared to the TCR. So uh, as a summary here, uh, I showed you that a car can induce a non-typical immunological synapse formation. And uh, our car can bypass LAT to transduce signaling. Uh, I think the, the remaining uh, a very interesting and a critical question here is, does the bypass of LAT uh, reduce antigen sensitivity of car? And uh, can we restore the antigen sensitivity and the enable car to target low antigen experiencing cells? Uh, I think uh, these are, are very fascinating uh, questions that uh, we are currently uh, exploring. Uh, so with that, I'd like to uh, thank uh, my lab, uh, especially uh, uh, people who uh, did this work, uh, 
Kendra, Chen, Xinyan, and also Ray um, from Rounds Lab. And uh, uh, also I'd like to uh, thank my funding uh, agents uh, to support our research and happy to take any questions.